Automation is supposed to make our life easier on an individual level and on a business level. However, what happens when automation becomes the attack vector? I want to introduce N8N, which is a powerful Node.js based automation engine used to connect APIs, security tools, and SaaS platforms with just a few visual notes. So you see N8N is a very convenient AI and automation platform. However, that exact convenience, because of a critical design flow, that convenience is turned into something far more sinister. In this video, we will break down the N8N remote code execution vulnerability. We will explain how it works and we will explain why authentication doesn't stop it and what defenders can do. And also we will do proof of concept using TryHackMe's release room, just a clean walkthrough of how this vulnerability works and what you do to stop it. So let's first start with what is N8N. So basically N8N is an open source workflow automation platform. It's the Lego of automation. And basically you can think of N8N as a workflow platform where applications are connected with nodes. So you get one node that maybe pulls data from an API and then get another node that cleans the incoming data from the API. And then you get um, another node that connects these data to uh, Slack or maybe an email. So basically you get a simple, powerful automation platform. For example, you could schedule a workflow that pulls fresh CVE data from the NVD API, formats it and automatically sends a report to your SOC inbox and Slack channel with zero manual work. There are three ways to connect or to deploy N8N if you're interested in automation. The first one is self-hosted. Then you get the cloud and then you get the internal uh, deployment. So basically self-hosted is for full control and data sovereignty. And the cloud is actually their managed plan. You can also subscribe to the cloud deployment of N8N. And lastly, you get the N8N internal, which is basically inside corporate networks, automatic business and security processes. Now, these are the vulnerable versions, which allowed critical RCE vulnerability in the workflow expression engine, which means now an authenticated attacker could execute system level commands, potentially leading to data breaches and system disruption. Well, here's the good news, basically. There are patches released uh, for N8N. So if you're running N8N and you have not updated, basically you should update to these versions. See, N8N is built on Node.js and basically everything revolves around JavaScript, both for the platform and for the user created workflows. Basically means guys, the heart of N8N is the workflow execution engine. And here basically you think of it as the brain that runs each node step by step and moves data through. And why I'm telling you all of this? Because the problem lies in the expression evaluation system. That's where things get interesting. You see any value wrapped in double curly braces like this gets evaluated as JavaScript during execution. Which means user supplied expressions inside these double curly braces are executed as JavaScript without proper sandboxing and without any input validation. What happens next? The hacker or the attacker can execute arbitrary JavaScript code with the same privileges as the N8N process itself. Even worse, you see, even authenticated user can run this exploit because there is no admin required here. Allow me guys to get a little bit technical here and tell you what happens uh, behind the curtains. So here's the payload attackers are using, buried inside those innocent looking double curly braces. At first glance, as you can see, maybe it looks messy, but the trick here is the double curly braces. The attacker creates an anonymous function and immediately executes it. Okay. Because here, the engine lets the attacker chain multiple operations while staying inside the expression engine itself. Inside that function, everything starts with this. In Node.js, this points to the global execution context. From there, the attacker reaches the process module, which is a Node.js global object that exposes the system level details. Now, next comes the real scale, which is the process.main module. That's the root module of the entire GS, Node.js application. At this point, I believe the attacker has effectively broken out of the sandbox. That's why from there, they call the required child process. And that's, that's the moment the security boundary disappears. The child process here is the core Node.js model that allows execution of system commands, something user expressions should never have access to. You see, in this example, the user runs uh, ID or execute sync ID. That command executes directly on the host system and returns the user identity. You are running N8N. Now, finally, you get the dot to string, which converts the raw output into readable text so the attacker can see it. In order to demonstrate the proof concept, we're going to use uh, the N8N room released by TryHackMe just yesterday. And here, after launching the machine and browsing to the dedicated IP address, logging in with the credentials. Let's see, let's log in. 
this is the email. That's the password. Okay, so the first thing you want to do here is to start from scratch. That's where we start creating workflows in uh, any attempt. So click on start from scratch. And here to uh, do that, you're going to add first step, manual trigger. Adding the manual trigger now, on top of this, we're going to connect the manual trigger with an edit field. So click on the plus sign and search for edit field. Click on this. And from here, we have to specify what field you want to edit. So we can add a new one. Click on add field. And we choose a name and a value. So the name will be maybe exploit. And the type is string. The value is the exploit itself. So from the GitHub repository or directly from the TryHack room, they have the exploit or the uh, command for you ready. Okay. Or you can just copy it from the proof of concept uh, repository. So basically, that's the uh, command. We're going to copy this. You see, guys, it is executing ID here. I'm going to copy this and execute this command and see if it returns the ID of the user. So we click on execute. Uh, you see, guys, it executed the command, and now we have the ID of the user. If you go back to the canvas, you can see the edit field is attached to the uh, manual trigger we have created earlier. Now let's go back to this. Open. And here you can control what command you want to execute. So instead of ID, maybe you want to use print, working, directory, execute step. And the current directory is home node. Let's see what are the contents of this directory. So inside we got the flag, the text. Now let's cat this flag. And now you've got your flag. Let's have a look. So how do we detect these kind of attacks? Specifically here, how to detect N8N expression engine attack. So unfortunately, the bad news is N8N does not give you the level of logging that allows you to granularly uh, detect this attack. So to compensate for this, what you have to do maybe is to uh, use a proxy. So basically, you put a proxy in front, in front of N8N. What happens is the, uh, the request bodies are being logged by your Nginx or Apache server, which is in front of N8N. It receives the request, request and it logs them. That's basically the key insight here. But remember that this exploit lives inside the workflow payloads. So when an attacker executes a malicious payloads, such as the one we show, we have shown in the, in, the, in the previous section, the malicious payload or the malicious JavaScript payload shows up in the request bodies, specifically in the HTTP post request bodies. So if you have an Nginx server, which is uh, logging the request bodies, now you get all the payloads, all the requests sent as post requests, which means now you get all the required logging and then you send the logs to your scene. So in the room, there are examples of how to use an Nginx proxy to log all the request bodies. That's an example here. And also, there is a Sigma rule that you can apply to automatically detect any attempts to, of exploiting this uh, vulnerability. You can basically run the Sigma rule and uh, target all the logs that are sent to your scene. But here's the thing. You should not st stop at detecting the attempts or the exploitation attempts at the web logs level because the attacker might have actually slipped the payload already without you knowing. And right now, they can spawn reverse shells, download malware, run recon commands, and establish persistence. So what do we do in this case? Now, putting a proxy in front of N8N and collecting the logs, running Sigma rules, that's good if you want to detect the exploitation attempts before they happen. Now, what happens if the attacker is already inside running commands. So what you would do here, you have to do some sort of correlation of the logs. So here we already got web request detections, plus we have to do process creation monitoring on the host. So here we correlate the logs uh, before the exploitation attempts, and we also consider the uh, probability that the attacker already running commands on the host. So we monitor for process creations, and basically we collect the logs on the host level and we correlate them. That's how uh, you catch what happens after the exploit. And that's basically how real incidents get confirmed. All right, guys, that was it. Let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next video.